All right, class, today we are going to be talking about proof by induction. Um, so as many of you may have realized, um, the previous slide had a picture of some dominoes falling over, and that wasn't a coincidence. Uh, the reason for that is proof by induction in many ways is very similar to stacking up a pile of dominoes in a line, uh, knocking one over, and having the entire uh, pile fall over. Uh, and when you set up dominoes, for example, you set them up in a way such that uh, if you knock over the first one, it will knock over, with, will not, it will knock over the second one, uh, which will cause then the second one will knock over the third one, and so on, uh, until the entire f uh, pile collapses. Uh, the mechanics of proof by induction are a lot, and like there's essentially the same way, uh, where you can break it up into the base case as well as the inductive step. For the inductive step, uh, we're essentially showing that if we knock over the nth domino, uh, then the nth plus one domino will also be knocked over. Uh, hence the kind of like the chain uh, that like, collapses from dominoes knocking each other over. The base step is essentially the first step where we start at presumably the beginning of the pile of dominoes and we knock over the first one, which is the initial thing that triggers the entire chain uh, reaction. Oftentimes for the base step, uh, it will be, we'll set it equal to n equals 0 or n equals 1. Uh, but of course, this could change depending on the context of the problem. Um, another thing to keep in mind is the inductive step. Um, oftentimes, you are also able to show, you, uh, instead of showing n implies n plus 1, you can also show n minus 1 implies n. Um, there's really, mathematically, they're equivalent, but sometimes the math just works out a little bit easier for one case over the other. Um, lastly, it doesn't really matter what uh, steps you show when you're doing these proofs. You can show one before the other and vice versa uh, since they are actually both pretty much independent steps and you need both of them to complete a proof uh, anyways. Um, so uh, like a lot of uh, concepts in 203, it's maybe like a little bit obscure initially of why this would be useful. Uh, this just seems like some like obscure math proof. Uh, how would it help you like build like, cool apps? or like perform better in your upper level classes. And I can say the logic and thinking you need for proof by induction is very similar, if not almost like identical to uh, what you need for recursion, uh, which many of you are also uh, have learned about if you took 280, uh, or another concept called dynamic programming, uh, which you will learn in 281, uh, which is, and dynamic programming is something without fail always shows up in the final 281 exam, and oftentimes also shows up in uh, each style, in CS style interviews. Essentially, the logic behind proof by induction in these two things is, is you have a partial solution to your solution, and you can use that partial solution to kind of like build the next step of your solution, uh, which as you can see, you can draw a lot of similarities between these concepts. Um, so yeah, we can just jump right in and do this example. Um, many of you guys might already know that uh, this is true, where if you sum up the numbers from 1 through n, uh, the total sum can be written in closed form as n times n plus 1 over 2. Uh, today we're going to rigorously prove why this is true with induction. Um, so we can start with the base case. Uh, this is just my personal preference. I like doing the base case, but again, you can start with inductive case if you like. Um, so you can now pause the video if you want to figure it out yourself. Uh, and I'm about to start with a solution in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So in this case, the base case is actually pretty easy. Um, you're just summing the base case. Essentially, you just sum the base, which is 1. So you're just summing 1 uh, to itself, which is 1, uh, which, is, uh, which means you have your left-hand side, your entire sum just reduces to 1. And then if you plug in 1 for n on your right-hand side, you have 1 uh, times 1 plus 1 over 2, which is also 1. Uh, so you've successfully proven your base case. Congratulations. Next up is the inductive case. Again, if you want to attempt this by yourself, uh, go ahead. Uh, but the solution will be presented in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. So in this case, the inductive step is a little bit more involved. So we're going to use the whiteboard over here. Uh, what you can essentially do in the inductive step is that you can just assume that the base case or the equation given is true, uh, which in this case, is, this is true. And what you actually want to show is that n plus 1 is also true. So what you do is usually you would just sub in n plus 1 for n and show that expression is also true. 
Uh, so we can just do that here. Uh, we want to summon whenever we see an n, we just put in n plus one. So your k stay the same. Uh, n plus one here. Uh, n plus one plus one over two. Um, then I'm going to write a question mark here showing that that's what we're trying to prove. Yeah. Now we can start with the left hand side. Uh, with the left hand side, uh, because it is a sum, you can break it up uh, into the sum of the first n numbers, which is here, uh, plus the last n plus 1 number. Uh, so we can just write that as sum of n that uh, plus n plus 1. Uh, since we can use this, we can just rewrite the equation as n times n plus 1 divided by 2 plus n plus 1. And from there, we can just finish it off with some basic algebra. Distribute out the n uh, and n plus 1. Uh, multiply the numerator to the denominator of this by 2 to get it in the same base. And we have this. Uh, which means our final solution is n squared plus 3n plus 2 over 2. Uh, now we just want to show that the right-hand side is exactly the same thing. Uh, the right-hand side is just this equation. Uh, we just distribute everything out um, and simplify. n squared plus uh, 2n plus 1n is 3n plus 2 over 2. And as you can see, your left-hand side equals your right-hand side. They are the same, so your inductive step has been proven successfully. Your base step before has also been proven successfully, which completes the entire proof. Uh, it's just written out again. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Any questions?